-hmm. a good colorist will know what the director or cinematographer need mm -hmm. out of them and what they can do to enhance the story mm -hmm. and, and help the story, help mm -hmm. tell the story. Welcome to Set Life, where we tell stories from our industry. I'm Kelly Leger, and this is Amber Buto. Hey, welcome to Set Life, coming to you from For The One Studios in Soundstage Number One. We have a guest with us today, Mr. Dan Diaz. So glad that you are on our show today. Thank you guys for having me. Oh, man. Super happy to be here. It is a pleasure. Uh, this is going to be a fun topic for me today. Yes, it is. And um, because Dan, I'm sure amongst other things, uh, is a colorist. And um, way outside of my expertise completely. <laughs> it's awesome, though. <laughs> I know. Dan, tell everybody what you do. What is a colorist? Tell us your scope of really what you do. Um, yeah, so it's we do a lot, but Essentially, what I do is just make sure that the intent and the vision of the director, cinematographer, and the production overall is the way it should be. Mm -hmm. uh, so by the time it hits the displays or the theaters or our phones, it, that I, I make sure that it looks the way that they intended it to be. Mm -hmm. um, and that happens in many ways, but I uh, match shots. I make sure that the tone and the look and the mood is supposed to be how the director needs it, how the you know cinematographer uh, photographed it, and then yeah, just make sure that the audience is seeing it the way they need it to see, like mm -hmm. to view it. So yeah, totally. Yeah, that's so like the short answer. The short answer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, so like the maybe the the very very layman's version of it yep. is you all see filters on your phone. You have an original photo, but then there's things you want to do to doctor it, to treat it, to give yeah. it a very certain look. Now that is a very vague way of doing it with your filters. Mm -hmm. Colorist goes into like the intricacies of all that. Like you saying, like our director, like myself mm -hmm. will have a vision of, mm -hmm. you see your favorite sci-fi movie or you watch, let's say Dune, mm -hmm. right? Dune is a popular movie right now and it has a very specific warm look to it. That didn't let necessarily look that way no. when they shot that in the camera. The colorist came in and gave that thing that looked at the, that the tone, direct, that tone, what it is that yeah. the director had. I, my favorite videos to watch are from colorist, mm. but I also feel like I see in color. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, everybody sees in color. That sounded a little funny. Unless you're but, colorblind. Um, uh, right. Nice. But I, but I, I color code things. I can like see a color swatch and then pick it out later. Like mm -hmm, I just mm -hmm. see in color. Yep. So I love to watch colors do their thing. And maybe when we edit this episode, if you give us like a little clip or something, I love it when they, you shoot in raw. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so you just, it looks really right. washed out. It's just real, you know, blah. Then you send it to the colorist and you come back and it's a whole tone. It's a whole mood. It's a whole, mm -hmm. it can be vibrant and bright and, you know, they, they mm -hmm. make it really bright or it can be moody warm yes. or it can have like a glow to it. it. You know, all of those things is what you do. And then I think people don't understand when you talk about shots. So when you're putting together a shot list for like a film, there are thousands and thousands of shots. And then you have to pull that color through the everything, yep. all the different angles, just like sitting here on this set, it, depending on where they move the camera, depending on the light, yep. depending on the tone, depending on the color, all that has to match. Right. Yep. You know, your job is it, so You mean it doesn't detailed. automatically do that all by itself? I wish. No. Oh, if we could. Sometimes I wish too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a big deal. To, to kind of set the stage for the conversation today. I think it's important because I didn't know all that, right. you know, before getting into this industry, I did not have any, I, I thought you just shot all that camera over there. And then like, it was, you know, I was like, wow. Like oh, your great. camera shoots with a really cool color. <laughs> yes. That's yeah. so great. Um, <laughs> well, camera no, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, and a lot of people that call it want to book here and want us to do some kind of production and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have to say, well, how far do we want to take this production? Like, right. we're we just going to shoot and raw. Are you? I mean, how much editing time do you want to put into this? How you know all that? And they're like, wait, what? Well, I just need a show. 
You're like, yes. well, I know, but all the details that go oh, into yeah. that, yeah, yeah, that goes into oh, yeah. that. So, what do you think is what do you think makes a great colorist? One that is willing to join a team and collaborate with the vision and the team who's creating the vision. Mm -hmm. A good colorist will know what the director or cinematographer need mm -hmm. out of them and what they can do to enhance the story mm. and, and help the story, help mm -hmm. tell the story. Um, a good colorist pays attention. They, uh, they know that it's not about them mm -hmm. and what they want. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's extremely easy to get what you want, but uh, it's not about that. So uh, other than the skill, that's very necessary. A good colorist it, um, is a part of the team mm. and joins the team and mm -hmm. the efforts of the production. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. What kind good. like now <clears throat> I know to ask this question, we're going to have to probably preface it with some of the language we use and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But you know, what makes a good colorist a good colorist? I mean, outside, like in terms of the right. actual skills. Yeah. Um, so we are sensitive to, I would say, just the emotions and like what what we can kind of pick out and or guide you to what colors or what schemes mm. or even lighting can like tell a story in our emotion, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I can look at a specific direction of anywhere that I am and I can already kind of see a scheme or a pattern or a mood, wow. right? Um, so cool. So when you pair that with the tools, you can create really anything, yeah. <laughs> yeah. any mood. So right. um, yeah, not only be technically savvy, but as well like in tune with emotions and, and how to tell a story through visuals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, <clears throat> oh, they, I have a question. No, what are you going to say? No, what are you no, going to say? No. Go ahead. I got them for days. They don't, they're not going to end I today. Know, so go, I know. You go I know. right ahead. So good. When did you realize that you, that this is like a skill you had or a way you saw in life? Because I think what you just described was something that um, I would say is like a sixth sense of yours, right? Like mm. a special gift of yours to be able to just look at something and see it. I've said that in interior design, I can look at an empty room or even a dilapidated house and I can go, oh, mm. oh that's right. amazing. Yeah. And everybody's like, it. Yeah, but somebody down. else is like, Sum. it's burned down. It's Trash like, it. What, it's really Level terrible, it. Amber. What, right. And I can see <clears throat> all the potential and everything. Mm -hmm. I think that is a gift given to you. When do you think you realized and how to put it into where you are now? Um, so I honestly think it came from my music side. Uh, yeah. So I played music for a while at some point in my life. And that's when I was able to express emotion through something else other mm. than words. Wow. Uh, and so uh, from there, without even knowing it, I was attracted to just like visuals at the same time. Mm. And I remember watching when the DVDs finally came out, watching all the behind the scenes in the menus. Yeah. I'd watch that more than the movie. <laughs> yeah. So I... Just yeah. producing yeah. content was just like attractive to me. And um, of course, being in music, I would watch the music videos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I used to skateboard, so I would watch a lot of skate videos. Yeah. And I said, well, I want to get into that. And uh, it came easier. Yeah. Not easy, but easier to me because sure. I was already in the art form. So mm -hmm. uh, I guess it sounds weird, but like the music opened my eyes to see things differently. Yeah. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. And then, like I said, the visuals were just coming to me a bit easier and I could understand it without even knowing what I was understanding. <laughs> like, yeah, it's yeah. Just, it was cool. But I think around then, and that was a while back. So, yeah. And, you know, music videos, I loved, I love shooting them too, mm -hmm. because there's no rules. Yeah, no. Like no, you yeah. talk about going color crazy. You could do <laughs> yeah. whatever you want. Like that's like freedom. First thing wild, that comes wild to wild. mind is like early MTV. Just yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could do yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That's a that's a phenomenal place for like a uh, a colorist to start because you get to flex. Mm -hmm. You yeah. get to just mm -hmm. kind of do all over the place. I love yeah. it. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, you get it. I might. I'm I not, was, was going to take it. You go. You okay, go. Okay. <laughs> okay. So okay. Um, Okay, let, let's talk about um, uh, let's talk about genre. Okay, mm -hmm. is there like 
is there specifically when someone says sci-fi to you or someone says Western or someone says, you know, gritty city, do colors come to mind when you hear all this? Oh, things? yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, so my favorite genre or one of them is a uh, horror. OK. And so immediately I can imagine a palette. OK. Uh, sci-fi as well. At this point, I kind of have like a template of each mm -hmm, genre. Mm -hmm. uh, the cool thing is you could completely surprise audiences and not do the typical, but mm -hmm. but yeah, they do. Like when you say Western, I'm already imagining. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's there's already kind of like a recipe for each. Yes. Um, and we should know it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. How, how often does a director come to you with a already exactly specific? This is what I see. This is what I want. Uh, it's becoming more common now. Okay. And that's actually something that I am trying to kind of educate people more on. Okay. Um, kind of like we were mentioning earlier, uh, when you have the tools at your disposal, you can do whatever you want, right? Yeah. All right. You could, I could go completely left field and I'm supposed to go right. But, uh, I want to encourage people, directors, cinematographers, producers, like get your vision early, mm -hmm. early on, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm nail your vision in pre-production don't wait till you're in my room you know right and because if you go in to the color room and you're not sure of what you want you might not really be satisfied with what you end up with you know mm -hmm. so um it's happening more now directors and and uh, cinematographers are coming prepared so at this point it's like a 50 50 mm -hmm. right now in, in in our town and just some of the people that come to me, but uh, I'm glad it's coming more that way, right? right? Um, right. Because I, I I see them more confident mm -hmm. in their story and their decisions. Mm -hmm. They they know what they want, yes. and I'm there to help them get to that final point. Yeah. What do you think are some of the best practical tips you could give to a colorist that you've learned from your experiences? Uh, ooh, so many. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, develop your your taste. Um, yeah. yeah, so that when someone asks you for your input, you're not wondering too mm -hmm. much. Yeah. Um, learn the the technical, and, and and especially now, there's so much going on. Right. I mean, like we were just saying, these cameras, yeah. they're getting more and more powerful all the time. Yeah. Monitors are getting crazy, and just everything is. Yeah. So you don't want the technical to get in the way of your creativity, mm -hmm. right? So just know it. Mm -hmm. um, practice. I mean, I practice any minute I can. I can do it. You know, I, I love it. I, I'm not sad when I'm in front of that monitor, yeah. and just practicing and just really dive into images and yeah. um, learn how to tell different stories and and express different emotions through those tones and images. Yeah, and you know. When you talk about templates, mm -hmm. my little brain is always pushing the envelope is what I'm always trying to do. I'm trying to find the very edge, right? right. And just go across <laughs> it just a little bit. You know, like I just don't like to stay in the box. Where do you as a creative, because um, you're, you're hired by people and your job is to deliver what they want. Mm -hmm. But in your own free, free time, when you're saying you get any opportunity, do you push the envelope with colors? Do you push it to go like, man... You know, so you said horror is one of your favorite genres. Okay. I have another question for that. Why? So that you can explain that mm -hmm. to people, why mm -hmm. that is for your, from your perspective. But in that, in your free time, do you go, man, typically this is the box. This mm -hmm. is what they do. And this is the standard. And this is what it is. But if they would do this, mm, yeah, it might would just, right. Beep, just take it yeah. a little bit higher, you know, like yeah. where do you give your time to do yourself time to do that? Um, for sure. Not when the client's in the room with me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, um, no, anytime I try to just expand my knowledge and, and yeah. my techniques, yeah, that's a great time to start pushing things and, and breaking the image is what we call it. Yeah. Uh, sometimes if breaking the image looks good, we're going to do it, you know, yeah. like pushing a couple of colors out of gamut. Mm -hmm. But if it's cool, then awesome. You know, that's the thing about color that there is no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's good and it can also be scary. Uh, yeah. But that we can push the envelope when if we want to, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I do it when I 
try to work on my technique yeah. so that when people come to me, I can offer something as well. Yeah. And a lot of times it, it works. And sometimes people are like, oh, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's all right. You know? yeah, sure. Yeah. I just want to be prepared yeah. yes. for whatever yeah. they come with. Yeah. There's plenty of geeks out there, just like me, just like Dan. <laughs> yes. So I have to ask a few of these questions. We have to talk Do a little that. bit about this. Good. People, maybe future geeks want to yes. be geeks like us in color. Let's talk. You you mentioned, uh, you know, you're the, the range. You were talking about, you know, basically you were talking about something coloring outside of the range, mm -hmm. the safe range. What does that mean when you're talking about gamut and all that? Um, yeah, so for our displays that we see every day, uh, all of them have a limit that they can reproduce. So uh, we have to be aware of what our, where our images will end up. And so these colors and, and color spaces, it's more tech yeah, lingo, but um, they're massive. Like yeah. these cameras capture a ton of information. So we have to make sure that we put them in the range where the displays will be able to show it to, properly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I push a color too crazy, it'll like a red will look very like flat and just mm -hmm. almost turning white because there's no room to show it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's like the gamut. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So <clears throat> for instance, okay. So as a, and this is good for anybody to learn on a production set too, producer, director, whatever. As we shoot nowadays, we shoot a lot of times what we're talking about and we shoot raw. Yeah. We shoot where there's as much space, much latitude as possible so that when I take that image and hand it over to a colorist, he has all the latitude in the world to make that black really black or make that white really white. So you're shooting in a space called raw where the, all the information is there. Mm -hmm. And so you have to understand that though, mm -hmm. as you're shooting that what I'm seeing on the image is not where we're going to end up. So you're yeah, shooting in sure. a place where there there's enough space to play with later. Yeah. So I can go Dune later. I can go mm -hmm. yeah. whatever your favorite movie. You can go, you can do all those things. You can make it darker, lighter, whatever it is. Because if you, if you make it too bright, you lose all the information. Mm -hmm. If you make it too dark, you lose all the information. Mm -hmm. And so you have to have it. You have to have it in space. Yeah, definitely. And then, so then you also step into the realm of like regular TV, but then now HDR is mm -hmm. in the world. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So, right that's even brighter. And if, if your eyes can handle it, great. Because right. uh, right. sometimes right. it's really bright. And so, uh, yeah, we just have to know the limits. Yes. Right? The technical limits. If a director wants to dare and break them, all right, cool. You yes. Know? Yeah. Well, let's see what we can do. But yeah, we, we have all of this latitude and, and information that we have to either control or just work with, you know? Yeah. How about Zack Snyder? How about, say, 300? Mm. Okay, there's a movie yeah. for you yeah. that definitely pushed some boundaries. Have you ever seen the movie 300? Yeah. That looks dramatically different yes. than a lot of things you'll see. Why does that or, look so different? Or even like Book of Eli. Or Book of Eli. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, to me, the way I explain it is that you're not going to go outside and see 300. Right. Right. Yeah. So we're in a hyper, like surreal, surreal world. Yeah. yeah. But you feel like invincible when you're watching that, right? Like, right. Yeah. wow, there's power here, right? Like, yes. And then of course you see the costumes and the story yeah, and all yeah, that, yeah. but right away you're like, this is awesome, you know, yeah. in a different world. Right. Yes. And I love it because I want to escape my problems. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we do, you know, that's how we can like just entertain and get you into a different world and just experience something different, literally just with the visual, mm -hmm. right? Like you haven't even heard anything yet, mm -hmm. but you see something and you're already something snaps in you that mm -hmm. puts you in a different place. That's yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, 300. I forgot about 300. Yeah, no, yeah, I know. I mean, just how they, yeah. they went crazy on their blacks. Oh, they yeah. crushed the heck out of it. <laughs> Contrast, everything. It was, was a just, trend for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. So, OK, so one other thing we talked about here. I'm running away with that. Run away with you're it. You're good. You're good. Um, so we talked about like one thing you mentioned was matching frame, matching mm -hmm. shots, right? Mm -hmm. So tell people, let's talk about that just for a minute, what that looks like. So for instance, in this room, you, you hit on it too. We have several cameras doing several things. Every bit of the lighting here, we have lighting hitting all of us a little bit differently. We have different shadows. There's different mm -hmm. things happening, but it's the colorist job uh, to make all those things succinct, look like they're at mm -hmm. least in the same space and not right. shot in two totally different places. How do you... How does that, how do you do that? What does that look like? Kind of take me through some of that process. Sure, yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned some some uh, things that do change the, the look. Uh, some, th some other things could be just the lenses as well. Yep. The way yeah. they 
the light hits the optics, mm -hmm. it could change the visual. So we just have to really pay attention to a couple of characteristics, uh, exposure, contrast, and saturation. Our eyes are the most sensitive to that as we're watching images cut next to each other. Mm -hmm. So that's my priority. Just make sure that all the exposure levels are ballpark, at mm -hmm. least at first, and that the contrast is matching. Uh, n people that know about it, they'll they'll scope it out. They'll see it, you know, like the differences. But right. um, to the just everyday person, as long as we hit those marks, we can match shots easier. Um, even when you're filming outside and the sun is coming in and out, uh, we can Amazing. do things where we're not adding sunlight, but we can keep your right. eye just in, in, in a consistent right. state, right? Yeah. Yes. So uh, that's part of the the science that you should also learn as a colorist and the technical mm -hmm. is if you are good with those characteristics of the image, you can match a lot wow. of things. Yeah. yeah. Wow. How often is it that you're given something to try to correct the color? Um, it's more common in like run and gun situations, like documentaries maybe mm -hmm. or live event things or or even film productions when you know the day's getting away from you or schedule you know scheduling and or you're outside mm -hmm. you know you don't have all the gear in the world to control the light um but correcting is still a major part of yeah. what we do yeah uh if if we can't do that there's almost no point <laughs> yeah. yeah it's yeah. just like our foundation yeah and but if you have that foundation then you can do anything mm -hmm. yeah wow mm -hmm. How has your, the way that you graded when you first started and where you are now, how mm. has that changed and, and why? How, do, how, how have you gotten to where you are? Um, I used to do too much. Okay. As if anyone's Super watched. Super common. Yeah. I mean, anyone did it. Like, right, yeah. I used every tool that I had. I did everything. You know, I was trying to be cool. Right. So I would take forever, number one, which mm -hmm. is already terrible. Yeah. <laughs> um, but now... Uh, oh, and what that would do is just make the image look bad. Right. Just, I would break it without even realizing it. Right. Now I'm much more in a simple approach. I trust the photography. I lean into it. Um, I do the most necessary things first, the major concerns. We take care of that first. And I just like really what, what as a colorist, lean into the photography. Mm -hmm. You know, we are in an industry that's all about images and photography, right? So I look at an image for a really long time before I even touch it. Right. Just mm -hmm. to see what they did mm -hmm. or if I'm in a call with them or whatnot, see the wardrobe, see the set design, see everything. Mm -hmm. And you work smarter. <laughs> you don't you don't have to do all of these techniques and you don't have to save or correct too much. Yeah. It's already there. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, th these days I just I take it more from like a cinematography standpoint, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. rather than make it look cool, which mm -hmm. is what I was always trying to do back then. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. I mean, how important, I know you're probably a little biased here, mm -hmm. but how important is having your, all of your images go through color? I mean, how, how important is that in the overall production? Um, I think it's very important because you don't want the audience to get out of the story. Right. Even if your images are looking good already, but if you're not making sure that they're consistent mm -hmm. in the most yeah. basic ways, your audience will yep. see that. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm actually more biased to sound because I love sound. Uh, I, don't work I was just close to going sound. Yeah. But, uh, but if your images aren't consistent and they're not yep. there in the pocket, yeah, people are going like, to... They might not even know why. Yeah, exactly. They just oh, know they, it's off. 90% yeah. of the time, they won't know why. Right. No. And that's what I think is so amazing about filmmaking, creativity process in, in general. I go back to interior design because it was the world I came from. And I could sit with people and be like, they're like, oh, my dream house. We're building this dream house and I'm going to design it. And you ask them like, okay, what color do you want your gutters? They're like, what? The gutters a color? Like, huh? <laughs> what, what about your fascia and your soffit? Right. What's that? Right. Uh, yeah, that's going to be on your roof. Uh, oh, the roof's a color? <laughs> oh, uh, you know, I mean, they That's don't true. know why they love it yeah. and they don't know why they don't like it. Right. They just do or they don't. And in my opinion, that's because it doesn't flow 
Mm-hmm. That's that being in tune with the the emotion or the way it's supposed to go, the natural bent of it. You, you know, it's like yeah. you see a, a real abstract house in the middle of the mountain. You're like, hmm. Right. That's kind of weird if it doesn't have any. So then I would say, great, take the abstract, but you've got to put natural things into it. So you've got to put a boulder in it. you got to put something from nature in it, tones of nature mm-hmm, in it, mm-hmm. something that makes it feel like it belongs. It's different, but it belongs, mm-hmm. you know, and I think that's what happens when the sound's not right, the color's not right, oh, yeah. the tone's not right. The, all that starts throwing people off and they're like, I don't know, that was weird. Right. It was like the movie If that we just, that I just went uh-huh. and watched. Uh-huh. It's Ryan Reynolds. Mm-hmm. It's big fuzzy cartoon characters. It's imaginary, <laughs> childlike things, mm-hmm. and I'm like, this is going to be fun. Uh, yeah, I thought as a family film, like just full. And it's family so film. heavy. It's heavy. It's wow. heavy. Wow. It's <clears throat> it's dark. Like the tone of the film is either being dark. Oh, never would have saw that. There's a lot of dark scenes in it, and I'm just sitting there like. This doesn't, like, I don't know. I, I feel like bait and switch right now. Like, I came to laugh. Why am I, like, feeling I want to cry right now? Why did I bring all my kids? Or I picked happening? all this. Yeah. You know, I mean, so those type things work. They sometimes work. Mm-hmm. And it really causes an emotion in you that's kind of like, oh, and that shock factor happens and it's magic. And then there's mm-hmm. the ones where you're like, I feel like it should have been happier. Right. You know, <laughs> there's there's all of those things. So I'm I'm with you when it goes to like you go to sound yeah. and to coloring. Oh, yeah. 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 It's 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 really important in my opinion. Um, there's so many things like you were saying with the that people don't realize there's colors in some places. Yeah. Um, yeah. I tell people all the time, pay attention to the color of your walls in your yeah. scene, mm-hmm. the table, yep, uh, the pants, everything, literally everything. Yes. It could be saying something. You know? Yes. Especially if you want a certain look, mm-hmm. like the almighty teal and orange look that everyone knows, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you can already create it on set. Right. Yeah. You kind of have it on right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. you can paint your walls blue. You can paint anything blue and then your skin tone pops out. Right. Yeah. You're done, you know. Right. So, um, I yeah, I encourage people to always pay attention to that. Just... Because it could be very powerful. And you're right when it comes to like, um, if you know that's the tone you're going to go and you talk to your colors prior to doing what you're going to, whatever you're shooting, mm-hmm. then you know your wardrobe color palette, uh, your set palette, all of that, even with this show, because in the beginning we had that LUT kind of like, it was a mm-hmm. custom LUT made, but it was a LUT in that vein. And it was like, I just started wearing different things. And then certain things that I wore, I was like, oh, my gosh, that washes me out so bad because right. yeah. of the coloring that's been on it. Mm-hmm. So now I'm like, I don't want to wear any too light of colors without a color around it mm-hmm. because of what's going to be thrown on it later. Mm-hmm. Doesn't wash you out or or not. Oh, yeah. So it's, you know, all that matters Very much, if you yeah. know on the front end. And that's experience, you know. Oh, yeah. Do you, did you ever watch, um, okay, the movie Amelie? You know, Amelie? Oh, yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Did yeah, you, yeah. Uh, like, the behind the scenes on that, oh, you're yeah. a behind the scenes guy. Right. That, like, opened my eyes up when I first yeah. saw that back in the day when that oh, yeah. came out. I was like, you can do all of that. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, that yeah. blew my mind. Yeah. And uh, another one that comes to mind is traffic. Uh huh. How it just looked so bizarre. Yes. But there's a reason behind yep. everything. Yeah. Yeah. That was wild. Those are productions and just visions that push that envelope they too, did. right? Yeah. 100%. And yeah. I think it opens doors. For other creatives that I agree. might have something crazy, yeah. I agree. Yep. And yeah, uh, us with the cinematography, if we prepare well, and you know what you want to see, yeah, it'll be done. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think it's so great. I, I know we're we're getting close in our time, but listen, yeah. you know how how does someone um, how do they get a hold of you? How do they contact you? How do they get involved with you? And, and yeah, so um, I have my personal Instagram, which is all of our portfolios now. It's my name, Dan Diaz. I caught it in time. Uh, <laughs> so just at Dan Diaz. I have a company now called Sweet Bread. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's just all color. That's all we do. Okay. Mm. All color. And yeah, uh, you can look that up to Sweet Bread Color on Instagram. And yeah, you can communicate anytime you want. Awesome. 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 Well, as it's been said, you are the man when it comes to color. That's what I hear. Everyone says it. Yeah. So if you want to have the best color... Dan is your guy. So 
we encourage you to reach out, follow him, um, connect with MDM. And uh, Kelly, it's been fun. It has been fun. So we're going to wrap it up for today, but we're going to see you next time on Set Life.